some of you will get so exasperated of trying to run from this disease, trying to run from this poverty, trying to protect yourself from this event, trying to protect yourself from the stampede of death after seven to eight and nine to 10 months of running from this and hiding from that and covering up that and wearing face mask and not going out and eating food and shopping and lying and stealing, you're going to ask God to just kill you. It's going to get so bad. This coronavirus thing that you're experiencing right now, everybody's going to try to survive it. Everyone is going to try to survive it one way or the other. Try to get medical care. Try to pay for respirators. Try to buy hospital beds. There'll be people paying a million to two million dollars for a respirator and a hospital bed. Poor people will be dying. Even right now in Italy, one of the world's most developed nations, Anybody over 70 years of age with the coronavirus is not getting a respirator, a hospital bed, or attention. They're working from 70 down, but perchance the younger people might have a better shot at living 70 people. Well, 70 years or older, they're, going, they're just dying over there. You're going to hear the death roll in Italy, and this is the 16th of March, skyrocket because they just aren't getting treatment. There are going to be people paying as much money as they can possibly rape, scrape, steal, and borrow to buy a respirator or a hospital bed. But what I want to say to you that this is not the worst of times. Things are going to get so much worse. At some point, you're going to just get exasperated and ask God to kill you. Just go ahead and kill me. Just go ahead and kill me. I can't. I'm tired. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of trying to outrun death. I'm tired of trying to outrun the the earthquakes. I'm tired of trying to outrun the rats of the pestilence and the gnats and the locusts and the flies. I'm tired. I'm tired of trying to outrun the disease. I'm tired of trying to outrun the people. I'm tired. I'm out of money. I'm out. I'm tired of running. I'm out of living, I'm out of food, I'm out of lies, I'm out of friends, I'm just tired. You're going to ask God to kill you by this time next year if you're still alive, many of you. And it's going to get worse. There may be a reprieve by the mercy of God, I don't know, he didn't tell me that there would be. But there are going to be people who are going to say, here, you can have my respirator, You can have my hospital bed. I'm just tired. I'm tired of running. I'm tired. I'm tired. Just go ahead and kill me. But God ain't going to kill you. He's going to let you suffer some more. He's going to let you suffer some more. And then the worst is yet to come. We're in the tribulation. So I, I said that God named tribulation Trump the tribute, the trigger to the tribulation and y'all scoffed at me. Now, I'm not here to say I told you, so that ain't what I mean. I don't have to do that. You already know that. You're saying that yourself. You're saying that yourself. But I told you three and a half years ago to get ready for this. I told you. I told you about the Joseph Zaffnap paying their storehouse fund. I told you. Because the Lord told me, I'm the Lord, I'm his messenger. I told you that such a day is coming. Now, let me tell you now that you, now that God has got your attention, it's going to get a whole lot worse than this. <laughs> These are easy, greasy days compared to where we're going. God's had it. He prophesied one of the greatest prophecies ever. I guess these prophecies run together. The greatest prophecy ever is the, tri- pro- the prophecy of the tribulation, starting in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24. Verse 1 through 7, where he tears down the temple, they said there are going to be wars, rumors of wars. And, and right there, Mr. Engineer, as well, what you just had up there, praise God. But there should be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, nor ever shall be. You can lead that there for Mr. Engineer. And, and we're not even in the thick of it right now. Some of y'all are still perverting God, perverting his word, perverting one another. But you haven't seen the worst of it. But even now, the shutdown of cities, we've never seen anything like this. 
We've never seen anything of a city like New York being completely shut down, except for the science fiction movie. Whole cities and nations and state school systems shut down. You've never seen anything like this. And the food supply ain't gonna last. I mean, you, 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 they tell you to shop moderately. Don't listen to that. Somebody was out there, the Tribulation Trump was out there the other day and a couple of other people out there talking about shop moderately, just buy enough for two or three days. Don't you listen to them lying people. Because in some place, the place the Trump was out there reading off the line of Publix and Albertson and Costco's and Walmart and Target and a whole bunch of other stores talking about they got it under control. Don't you believe that lie? At some point, if people aren't going to work, ain't nobody packaging nothing. The truck drivers ain't trucking. The ships ain't shipping. The stores are not being replenished. You better get everything you can while the getting is good if there's any more get, good, good getting to be gotten. But you've never seen anything like this, just as it is right now. There's never in America, not even 9-11, not even World War II, you ain't never seen nothing like this. Just today. And today is not bad. Today is pretty good. You but you ain't never been this bad in America as it is right now. Tribulation Trump. So I don't know when you're going to listen. I'll have more to say about that as we go along. But he is the trigger. So I told y'all some years ago. And God spoke to me. Now, I'm going to keep on te uh, teaching. Well, uh, the Lord has given me the opportunity to reach and uh, to put together a wonderful uh, ministry called the Ministry of the Elect here in, in Harlem, New York, the Outlaw World Missionary Church. And thank God that you've logged on. And we're going to try to, our church is open, our ministry is open. We're going to try to stay open as long as we possibly can. But my friends, it won't be long now before you'll be asking God to kill you. Wishing that you had died earlier. Wishing that you didn't have to see the things that you're going to see. Wishing you'd have to see people cutting up the skins of a rat and catching rats in the tenement buildings and eating rats. Wishing you didn't have to see that. Those are then the days of the prophets of old in the Old Testament. The children were boiling the skin, the flesh of their children and eating their children in private and secret because the famine was so sore. The Bible says they were eating their own children. The Bible says the famine was so sore. When that day comes for you, you're going to wish you didn't have to see it, but you're going to see it because you wouldn't see the light. And I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not I'm, I'm, uh, admonishing everybody in that regard. There are many of you, let me say a word of comfort and encouragement and blessings and praise to those of you who have seen the light, who are calling him tribulation Trump, who recognize that God is speaking, who recognize the power of God speaking through the outlaw world missionary church. Well, praise God for you. Praise God. You didn't let the devil get you. He almost did a couple of times or two, but you kept hanging in there. Praise God. Praise God. But no, they were boiling their flesh in the days of the famine. They boiled their flesh and they were making deals. Thank you, Mr. Engine. He found it for me. And one man said to another, so we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, give thy son that we may eat him. And she had hid her son. When those days come and they're coming, they're coming to a table and a boiling pot near you. I don't care who you are. You could be the richest person. The stock market, all that money is gone. All that money in the market is gone. It's gone, I tell you. It's gone, that money in the market. It's gone. It's gone. Is gone. And you're going to be boiling your children to eat them. But we of the elect shall never beg bread. Good God Almighty. Woo! We shall never beg bread and we shall never be defeated. We shall step over the ditch called the grave and we shall go into the 1,000 year reign of peace. 
Praise Almighty God. I'm James Evan Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon, uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. So the man in report will tell you what God has said whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he. I'm the Lord, sir. James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.